I managed to get my hands on a nice FLIR infrared camera, so I decided to make a video. Humans and most other animals are only able to see a very narrow band of electromagnetic radiation. Some animals can see slightly deeper into UV or IR, but their ability is pretty limited. Infrared is just above the visible band, so we can't see it, but we are able to sense it as heat. Objects that are at or around room temperature radiate the majority of their thermal energy as infrared. So things like electronics, our bodies, etc. all release a pretty decent amount of infrared light. Thermal imaging was originally developed by the military, but it now has a much wider variety of uses. I'm not going to go over every single way that it's used, but on the side here, I'm going to provide a short little list of some of the common ways that it's used. In chemistry, and especially organic chemistry, the use of thermal imaging is honestly pretty limited. What I'll be showing you guys today is mostly just for fun and educational purposes, and it's not for anything practical. The IR camera that I'm using is the FLIR B60 that you see here, and just before we get started, I want to mention a few things about some of its basic functions. Here's the main screen, and there's really just two things I want you to pay attention to. In the middle of the screen we have a crosshair, and the temperature of whatever we're pointing at is reported at the top left. Near the bottom, we have a bar that ranges from black to white, with a number on each side. The numbers tell us the temperature range that we're visualizing, and the bar tells us how the temperature is being represented. We can select from different color palettes, but right now we're in grey mode, so colder stuff is darker, and hotter stuff is brighter. So when I put my hand in front of the camera, you can see it's much brighter than the background. The other color palette that I'm going to be using in this video is the rainbow one. With the rainbow color palette, it's a lot easier to visualize small temperature differences. The color palette that we choose to use really depends on what we're trying to do, and in this video, I'm going to be using both. In general, most IR light can't pass through glass, so you can see here when I put my hand behind the beaker, it disappears in the IR camera. On the other hand, most plastic bags or garbage bags will actually let IR pass through. If there's something warm or cold in a black garbage bag, we don't have to necessarily open it to see what it is. Just for fun, you guys can guess what we're looking at here, and whoever's first to get it right, I'll give you some sort of reward. Into a bag of water around 36C, I dumped in a bunch of ice cubes. Because cold water is denser, the lower layers actually cool much quicker. As soon as the water is cooled by the ice cube, it sinks to the bottom and it doesn't really have any time to mix with the upper layers. I thought it was actually pretty cool that you could see a current of cold water moving from the ice cubes to the bottom of the bag. Sodium is quite reactive and it reacts with oxygen in the air, and this generates heat. My sodium is stored under oil, and by the time I cleaned it off, it was already several degrees above room temperature. The reaction between sodium and air only occurs on the surface of the sodium, so if we cut it open, we can see that the inside is still near room temperature. As the fresh sodium reacts with air, it's going to heat up, and we can see the color slowly change from blue to red. Many solvents, like acetone, feel cold when they get on you. This is due to something called evaporative cooling, and with an IR camera, we can visualize this effect. In a liquid, we have a mixture of molecules that are all at varying energy levels. Some of the higher energy molecules near the surface are actually able to overcome the forces that are keeping them as a liquid, and they escape as a gas. When these higher energy molecules are able to leave the liquid, the average energy of the molecules left behind is lower. A lower average energy level means a lower temperature and an overall cooling effect. When the molecules escape, they don't just fly away, they usually just remain as a gas above the liquid. In a closed system, like we would get if the acetone were in a bottle, we would have an equilibrium between the gas and the liquid. In an open system like we have here, we don't have a true equilibrium, but there's still some back and forth going on. When I blow on the acetone, I disrupt the equilibrium by getting rid of the acetone vapors that are sticking around. 
This leads to an increased rate of evaporation, and we can see the acetone getting a little bit colder. Here we have some water, which is around 72C, letting off a fair amount of steam. What's interesting is that the IR camera reports the steam as being almost the same as the background temperature. Most infrared cameras have a very hard time picking up gases in general, and I'm honestly surprised I even see the steam at all. To get proper gas detection, we would need to use a specialized infrared camera. Now I'm going to do what you're not really supposed to do, which is pour water into sulfuric acid. The density of the sulfuric acid is much higher, so the water just sits on top. Despite using room temperature water and 93% sulfuric acid, the temperature still goes to a nice 86C. If I were to use warm water and concentrated 98% sulfuric acid, things probably would have boiled. Here's the opposite and what we're supposed to do, which is adding sulfuric acid to water. The major difference here is that the heat is much more evenly distributed. The solution does get hotter than before, and this is because we're actually getting a good mixture between the water and the sulfuric acid. It might be scary to see that the temperature peaks at something like 99 or 100 C, but this actually isn't dangerous because the new sulfuric acid water mixture, which is around 65%, boils at 150 C, not 100. So here, the risk of boiling is pretty low, but in the other case, when the water and sulfuric acid don't mix really well, we have pure water sitting above sulfuric acid, and that will boil if it gets to 100 C. In general, I do think the danger is a little bit overhyped, but we see here that there is some benefit to it. A lot of metal surfaces, like aluminum or stainless steel, reflect infrared light really well. What's cool is that if the surface isn't polished, the visible light will be scattered, but the infrared light won't really be affected. With my normal camera, I'm just a vague shadow on my fridge door, but with the infrared camera, I'm as clear as day. You can also see here how I had to hold two cameras at the same time to take a lot of these shots. Here's a shot of my computer motherboard, and we can see how the heat is distributed. For me, this is just for fun, but for manufacturers of electronics, it can be quite useful to know where the heat is building up. They can use a the thermal imaging to make sure that heat isn't building up somewhere it shouldn't, or to see which parts are working harder. If a part is working too hard and heating up as a result, it might fail earlier, and this is an important thing to know. From this point on, I'm just going to do a couple of fun things with the camera. Here we have my sink, and I start by turning on the cold water. At some point, I change the tap to hot water, and we can see what it looks like when it mixes. I think it kind of looks like the experiment a lot of us did as kids, where we would put food coloring and dish soap into milk. We can also see if somebody sat in your chair when you specifically told them not to. Or maybe you told them not to use your camera, but they went ahead and used it anyway. You can also walk around and become your local neighborhood creep. Looking around, we can see most people's cars are cold, which means they've been home for a while. This guy's car is warm though, so he must have come home recently. As usual, I'd like to thank everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. Everyone who supports me with $5 or more per video will get their name at the end like you see here. I've been saying forever that I would introduce some more rewards, and, you know, spice up my patron page a bit, but I kind of don't really have any ideas. If you guys have any ideas as to what might be feasible and good tier rewards, please let me know in the comments. Also, I'm trying to merchandise a little bit. I'm going to be making some Nile Red branded beakers, as well as lab coats. If you think this is a cool idea, let me know in the comments, and maybe leave some suggestions as to how I could design things, or, you know, make it special or better in some way. Anyway, these are the videos that I've already filmed, and the ones that I plan to film. If you guys have any extra suggestions, please let me know.